Now on WSAR's Breakfast Club, it's the Bristol Community College Update. A monthly visit with President Laura Douglas on 1480 WSAR and 95.9 FM. Sponsored by Bristol Community College. Dreams within reach. Visit bristolcc.edu. All right, got a Monday morning. Uh, kind of a cloudy one out there, a little bit of ground fog. And go easy if you're on the roadways. It's been a pretty hectic morning there, that's for sure. Heading out to Rhode Island, still about uh, about 19 to 20 minutes out. Stop and go from Seacock to uh, the Washington Bridge. All right, let's uh, join up with uh, President Laura Douglas, Bristol Community College, on this 12th of September. And Laura, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Heck. I'm doing really well. How about you? I'm doing great. How was your summertime? You know, it was really excellent. We got a chance to get away, and uh, but very, very happy to be back in school. And we are seeing a huge increase in our in-person learners, about double what it was last year. I think people are so much more confident about coming back and learning in person. So, yes, we have a lot of students buzzing on all of our uh, campuses in Attleboro, Taunton, Fall River, and New Bedford. Well, that is great. I know we want to kick around a couple of things. The Flex Start uh, courses, and also we want to inform folks about uh, students, particularly and their families, how they can pay for college, uh, including grant scholarships and payment plans. So there's a, a bunch going on there. Uh, Bristol opens. Uh, when do you begin? Is it the twentieth now? At this point. So we uh, started last week with our traditional 15-week semester, okay. but we have a, a, a semester that starts a little bit later. We call it Flex Start, and that's for qualified new students as well as returning students. You know, sometimes we forget all the different pieces that need to be a part of starting college, and maybe a transcript doesn't come in on time, or somebody doesn't get their financial aid um, application done. Uh, so what we do is we help students uh, that might be missing a, a few pieces or or just didn't get off to start or maybe went to some other college and wasn't happy and wants to come back home. Um, it gives them a chance to start on Tuesday, September 20th, so people still have some time to enroll. And um, we really hope that uh, if, if there are listeners out there that are thinking, yeah, maybe I missed my start and, oh, boy, this is great for me. Uh, we hope that you will contact us by this Friday. That's the time when we need to have you you kind of in process for Flex Start. Um, and we've got some different um, ways to do it. You can email Flex Start at bristolcc.edu, or they can call our Flex Start team. We have a team that uh, is ready to help, and that's 774-357-3200. Three one. So uh, lots of uh, opportunity. And then this week we have two what we call Make It Happen events. Uh, and that's a time when students can come on campus, uh, they can complete their registration process, sign up for classes, they can confirm their financial aid status. So in Attleboro at 1 p.m. on Thursday, the 15th, we have a Make It Happen event that's at 1 o'clock in Attleboro. And then this Friday at 10 o'clock at our, at our Fall River campus. So it really is a great way for students to think about coming to school if they just kind of missed what they thought was their opening. Well, that's uh, that's uh, that is that is great. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, it is kind of human nature. This falls uh, falls through the cracks, or what? Uh, this happens, or what? And then, uh, so to afford the uh, students the opportunity to go ahead and uh, and regroup and then get back on track, that's great with that flex program. That's beautiful. Yeah, so come on down. And, you know, people, you know, we, we you mentioned about um, paying for college. Yeah. I think this is another really important thing to talk about, Heck. You know, we are the most affordable college option in our region. Uh, we have low tuition and fees and, um, you know, lots of scholarships and grants. Uh, we have um, most of our students are eligible for financial aid and our financial aid staff. 
will help um, with workshops, applying for financial aid, uh, helping to decide how to best pay for college. We also have payment plans. You know, not every student wants to take out a loan or want or is able to pay down tuition and fees in one lump sum. And so we have these very affordable payment plans that allow students to pay um, as they go. And that's a very popular um, option. So, um, and then the other thing that people don't always think about, sometimes we think about college degrees and the commitment that it takes, but we're also encouraging students to start small. Start with a certificate, a short-term certificate. Um, it doesn't take as long to complete. You can get into the field with that certificate and get a good job. And then many times the employer will help pay for the rest of that associate degree, or you can then go part-time to finish up a, an associate degree. They, those certificates kind of fit into a larger degree program. So there's lots of different things there uh, for students to be thinking about. You know, when we think about traditional college, a lot has changed. Yeah, no kidding. But all of course, what we, what we've had the last uh, several years, a lot of things have changed. So that, and I want to squeeze in one quick question before you wrap it up: I, Is everything kind of back to normal now? And you don't need a mask anymore. You don't need a. I mean, we're just it's uh, as usual, I suppose, right? That's a great question. Yes. In order to take. Uh, classes in person, you do need to show proof of vaccination. Uh, you don't need to be vaccinated if you're taking online courses, so that's one differentiation. But on campus, yes, uh, masks are optional. Uh, we have a color-coded system hack, which is red, orange, yellow, and green. We're in yellow right now uh, with the number of cases. Um, and uh, orange signifies that uh, maybe cases might be getting a little bit more prevalent in our community. And if we get to red, that's when we actually make masks required. So we kind of go in and out, and the idea, of course, is to prevent any spread. We want our students to be able to successfully finish uh, the semester, and our faculty and staff as well. So, you know, if you get COVID and you have to be out for a week or more, uh, that's really challenging with a college semester. So uh, we have had very, very low um, case counts and transmission rates amongst our students and faculty and staff. We just like to keep everybody happy and on track um, with their degrees and certificates. So yes, it's a very flexible environment and we communicate when things change so everyone's aware and can take the precautions that they need. All right. Well, that's a good idea. You, you want to... Uh, you, what we've all been through, you certainly don't want to kind of lose control on, on cases uh, that might pop up. So, Absolutely, that's a, that's yes. A, I mean, you know, we provide vaccine clinics on our campuses for our students and often the, the public as well, uh, flu vaccines. And uh, next week we'll, we'll do a, a bivalent vaccine clinic here on our campus. So we're always working hard to keep everybody healthy and strong. And uh, we also allow our students and faculty and staff uh, access to free testing testing uh, at any time should they need it. So um, we can always monitor and, and quarantine people that uh, might catch COVID. But right now, it's a very small number. We plan to keep it that way. All right. Well, good for you. That's I think it, that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and, uh, you, you know, you certainly you, you want to be cautious and you, it's, it's great that things are better. But now regarding the, the boosters for next week, uh, are those open to the public? Do folks have to do they have to check in someplace, or is it uh, break that down for me before we? Yeah, wrap it up? so this one that we're doing next week is just for the Bristol Community College okay. family, All right. students, okay. faculty, and staff. Okay. But in the future, you know, we've done a lot of these clinics. Um, look for uh, other opportunities because we we love to do these in our community, and we work with a number of other partners to make sure that we have easy access to these. But yeah. I do believe believe that um, most people, if they call their doctor's offices or their local pharmacies, they can find out they're now starting to become much more available um, than uh, they were last week. Yeah, so it, it was it was it, it was tight there for a while. It was great to have yeah. to have you folks. I mean, you did so many of those. I <laughs> the, the, the number was, yeah. was. I mean, how many did you do? It was like it was well, you did. You had to do what uh, ten a year or something. It seems. Oh, like, we did so many. We yeah. did a lot of shots in arms. But you know, that's the community in Bristol Community College, right? We we certainly are an education.
educational provider, but you know, helping our public stay healthy uh, is is really an important role of, of what we can do together. And of course, we have a lot of health sciences programs, right? So that's part of our mission with nursing and dental hygiene and um, occupational therapy and clinical lab and all those other things. And it's probably a good time for me to give a plug to our dental clinic, which is open to the public uh, for those people who might need cleanings and dental care. It is free of charge, and uh, that is an important part of what we do. We love to keep our community in good health. All right. Great info as usual. Thank you, President Laura Douglas, Bristol Community College. Hope things are well with you and your family, and uh, glad to hear you had a great summer. Thank you, Hack. Stay happy. You too. Take care.